I greet the brethren with peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite everyone to open our Bibles. The prophet Daniel, chapter 5. Daniel, chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5 from verse from chap from verse 1 Daniel 5 verse 1 Amen Daniel 5 from 1 from on from 1 forward That says the word of the Lord Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast for a thousand of his lords, and drank wine and in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of, of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of God of gold and silver, bronze and iron, uh, wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and, and wrote op opposite uh, the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's pl uh, palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king counter consternance, consternance changed, countenance changed, and his thoughts uh, troubled him. So that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud to bring the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to these men of Babylon, Whoever re reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. The king Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords his lords were astonished. The queen, because of uh, the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke saying, uh, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your Continents change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Lord God. In the days of your father's light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were, were found in him. And in King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him uh, chiefs of the magistrates and goes all the way to verse 12.
Bless the name of the Lord. The church it desires the return of Jerusalem prepared for the people of God because that's the place that we're going to go. We're going to spend the entire eternity. And this Jerusalem is reserved for people, for the faithful, for the ones that are not contaminating with the things of this world. And the text that we just read speaks exactly of the position of the servant. The text that we read speaks of a feast. Not a, just a common feast, but a great feast. 1,000 people were invited for this feast. People that were influent, influential, people that were, were well known, people with, with um, recognizable name. And this, this feast, if we pay attention to what was taking place in Babylon, we will see that it was a moment very similar to the moment in which we are living today. Very similar. Many characteristics that they were living, we live uh, in our days. In a sense, in humanly speaking, as well as spiritually. This feast, firstly, this feast was the last feast in ba uh, the Babylon Empire. It was the last night, that was the last night of the Babylonian Empire. And we're, we're living in this way as well. We're living the last night here on this life. And God's clock in the prophetic time of God, we're living the passing of a day from one day to another. We know that people live, people are going on their lives in the way these people did. They are celebrating. People in the world, they live their lives like if there, like if there was no tomorrow. They want to live today. I want to enjoy my life today. Whatever I want to do, I want to do it today. If there is enough time tomorrow, then, then I will do it. People in the world, they live without taking into account the tomorrow. And the Bible speaks of that. In Revelations, we see this. The person that is, that is impure becomes even more impure. People are not wait, expecting anything from tomorrow. First of all, because they don't have a future, they don't have a hope, they don't have even don't have any reason to live. And that's why they want to leave everything today. They want to spend everything today. And that's what they're doing here. They were living in the last feast. It was it was a feast that was filled with a lot of wine. That's what I'm saying. It was not just any feast. It was a feast that was very popular. But in the same way that the world lives, their last day, the faithful church of the Lord also live its, lives its last day. Because no, we know that the new kingdom is about to come. In the same way here that the Medo Persian Empire to control the Babylonian Empire came to an end and the, the Persian Empire started, we also know that the church will reign with Jesus. The church desires uh, for the arrival of our king. We desire to be in a new Jerusalem before a king. And this king is the Lord Jesus, the one who is the, wins our victories, our Lord and Savior. A thousand people were invited. A thousand people. It was a feast with lots of wine, a lot of drink, a lot of 
happiness. People are distracted with the things of this life. We don't even want to need to explain what is the result, a consequence of you participating on a feast in which you drink too much. I don't want to get into details what alcohol does to men, what alcohol does to people's mind, the result of a person that is drunk. The mind begins to lose its reason. Man is no longer sober and begins to do absurd things. The control of the alcohol in the life of man, inside of man's body, we here not talking about. This is something that we all know scientifically. We don't even need to know, go to the Bible. This is something that we see in every day. It is interesting that the TV, they make commercial about beverage, but they say, drink with moderation. <laughs> drink but with moderation. That's so bad. The people lose the sense of their lives. Absurd things take place. Things that not even science can explain. Things that don't even the psychiatrist can explain what is happening in the world. Prophetically speaking, is the same thing. Man's mind without Jesus, man's heart without Jesus, is a mind that is drunk. A mind that has no reason or idea of what they are doing. When man is away from Jesus, man is living his life. Not to live with Jesus, but to die in this world, man does absurd things. Things that surprise uh, their peers. Things that have no explanation. How can, a, can, you, can you explain a mother that generated a child for nine months and now the baby is born and now she rejects the child? and place the child inside of, of a plastic bag or throw in the garbage or throw in a lake and leave it behind. How can that be explained? It's a ma mind that has been distorted by alcohol, a mind that does not know what it's doing. It was a mind that has been taken over by evil. How can you explain a man that mistreat a child, abuse a child, how can that be explained? There is no scientific explanation. This is craziness. How can we explain a young lady that gets pregnant before the proper time and then goes and aborts the child? And sometimes the parents even help. This is not abortion. This is, this is a killing. The person, the people that do this, they are going to answer to the Lord. How can it all be explained? That's what we see in the world that we live in. That's what we see in every day in the newspapers. That we see in our environment, inside of our circle of friends, in the society in which we live. People living today like if there was no tomorrow. And now, things got, got even worse. What was the, the vessels of gold and silver, the things that were in the temple, the whole, the things that were used for the service to the Lord, they were also taken to be part of this feast. This mixing of, of things that we see today. Today, we don't know anymore what is holy and what is profane today. Everything is mixed up. When you see religions, you, when you see the ones who call themselves Christians, it's a great mess, great confusion. You don't know anymore. Is it from God? Is it not from God? Is it rock and roll? Is it, is a, uh, or you can no longer discern things anymore. The holy things have been brought to this great feast. 
for the princes, from the concubines and women, for all of them to use the vessels of honor, the vessels of gold and silver. Everything is a big mess in this great feast. My brethren, what we expect from the part of the Lord is something, it's only one thing. What the church is awaiting is the fulfillment of the prophecies. Every, no pressure, pleasure in seeing this, but the more things happen, the more the church glorifies the Lord. Why? Because Jesus is soon to return. Because the word has been fulfilled. It doesn't matter whether men wants it and depend of man's help. The word of the Lord is being fulfilled. The signs are being fulfilled. Earth, uh, um, uh, the earthquakes, the lack of peace. Man cannot preach about peace. Man cannot implement peace. There is no agreement. No matter how much the governments try, they are unable to implement harmony peace they are not able to achieve it you know why because peace we can only find in Jesus the only peace that resolved humanity's problem is the one that Jesus gave there when he when he entered into that room where, where there were the 12 disciples and he says and he said peace be with you that's the peace that resolved man's problem that's the peace that resolves the problems of humanity there's no other type of peace and what we read is exactly this man is fighting when trying to resolve his problems trying to implement something that they are not able to achieve it is it is something so simple you just need to open up your heart for jesus and that's what you hear the most in churches that's why you hear the most and uh, Christian environment that Jesus is love, Jesus is salvation, Jesus is peace. And in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all this, thing, this great feast, a hand appears and this hand begins to write on the wall and wrote a couple of words that was unrecognizable for those who were, were there in the moment in which the king saw that hand we read here he was astonished I am even trying to imagine his jaw falling to the ground and his his knees knocking against each other and his face completely upset and he was scared with that because he knew that that was not normal when he saw that hand writing those words he was he was crazy he called everyone he called the the wizards the ast astrologers and called everyone to give me the interpretation nobody was able to help him nobody knew no way because man cannot discern what is spiritual man cannot understand man cannot explain what is happening in the world because this is a project of the father because this is in the word that's why man cannot change anything the church of the lord has its course the project of salvation man it has its course independent of the will of man this is not human knowledge this is not the knowledge of the things of this world that you can resolve those things and nobody was able to resolve this and but then the queen she remembered daniel she had heard about daniel because uh, ki the king's father knew daniel and when daniel was brought still young to babylon when he was brought captive to jerusalem he came very young and from the beginning daniel uh, place in his, heart, in his heart to desire not to be contaminated with the, the things of the kingdom. So Daniel was a servant of God and he had everything to fail. 
So Daniel had everything, had every reason to deny the Lord. I was a man that was, I was a young man that was raised knowing the, the God of Israel, the God that opened up the Red Sea, the God that has rescued the Egyptian, uh, the Jewish people from the Egyptian captivity. Now the same the God allowed his people, his fathers, the, the city that he knew, allowed it, that city to be destroyed. But even so, he placed in his heart. You know why? Because the experience of Daniel was a, a true experience. Daniel had an experience with God. God didn't have an experience of hearing about. This experience changed his heart in such a way that when he was brought to the presence of the king of Babylon, he said, I will not contaminate myself. And Daniel was honored in a foreign land, in a foreign city, a city in which well, Babylon was the capital of the world back then, with this, its constructions and its gardens, everything. Babylonia, Babylon was, everybody wanted to know, to know Babylon, like New York City. Everybody wants to visit New York. Everybody likes to visit beautiful city, large city. Everybody wants to visit. In Babylon, it was like that. But Daniel, there, he denied all of this. And he maintained his stand with the Lord. Daniel never forgot to pray to the Lord. Daniel faced the lions. He faced everything. Daniel was betrayed. Daniel was abused. But Daniel remained. But here, he was already an old man who was older than 70. When he came to Babylon, he was a young man. He was honored by the Lord. And Daniel was not on this feast. Uh, have you noticed? He was not in this feast. The nobles, the one, the influencers, the the ones that were well known, they were have been invited. But Daniel was was not with them. But then the queen had to suggest, "Oh, go find Daniel, wherever he is, and bring him here." So then, when Daniel arrives before the king, the first thing that the king asks is what we read here. Are you that Daniel? Are you the Daniel that I heard about? My brethren, this question has everything to do with us, with the Church of the Lord. You know why? Because if Daniel had been corrupted himself, because in the story of Daniel, if at any moment Daniel had denied the Lord, he had forgotten his commitment with God, if, if in any moment of the life of Daniel he had gone astray from the path of the Lord, he would not be the, be he would not have been able to interpret what came from the part of the Lord. And in the same way today, the Lord is asking us, "Who are you here? Are you their servant? Are you that woman that when you met the Lord Jesus, you denied everything?" for love of the kingdom of the Lord? Are you this man of, or this woman that when met the Lord, you face everything for the love of salvation in Jesus? If you are that person, if you are that person that the Lord has brought you, took you away from the world and here operated in your heart, he transformed your thoughts and removed evil, here he removed the seed, everything that is corrupt, and gave you here a new life, a new experience. God uh, rep uh, changed your name, he placed your name in the book of life. If your name is in the book of life, not only in the hall, of, um, the list of members of the church, but then, then you are the one that God wants, because that's the one that God is counting on. It is with sermon like this, uh, not getting mixed with the offerings of this world. Are we men or men, women and youth? There are both that the Lord is counting on. You know, why? Because there is an enigma that needs to be explained to the world. There is a word, there is a, a message that needs to be preached. And this word is that Jesus is coming. 
the word is it's a word that the world does not know many are living this life that tomorrow would not exist and for those that we need to preach it is for those that we need to carry this word of salvation in Jesus and for this the question needs to be asked are you that Daniel are you are really you the one that when met when met Jesus that person spoke in tongues or was baptized by the Holy Spirit are you the one that loved the Lord with all your strength are you the same and when you law the Lord take you out of the uh, addictions and took your feet out of the mud of sin and took you from the path that would lead to hell and placed you in this place and when you said Lord I will never deny you are you the same person if you're not tonight you can say Lord renew my life I want to take on a new commitment with you Lord I want to leave this place once again as a new creature forgive my sins forgive my incredulity forgive my lack of faith but from this night on I may leave this place as a new servant as of a God that is living are you that Daniel may the Lord bless us we're gonna sing a song
Louvado seja Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. My brethren, in the same way that the Babylonian Empire came to an end, this life is also going to come to an end. But for the Church of the Lord, it's going to start a new day. The sun of justice will be shining upon those who are in Jesus. A new day will be born and will be forever in the arms of our Savior. All the pain, all the anguish, all sadness, everything will come to an end. It will be only joy, only feast. Hallelujah. We're going to stand up.
Glória a Jesus. Amém, oh, Pai. Come, Lord Jesus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glória a Jesus. Amen. We cannot finish the service without first praying for you. If you need a renewal, if you need your life to be increased, if you need your spiritual life, the level of your spiritual life to be increased, you speak with the Lord right now. Where you are right now, you can say right now, Lord, I place my life before your altar. I need a renewal. I need a strengthening. I need that you help me. And I need a, to be a servant that's faithful to you, not to a denomination, not to an organization, but to the King, for the God of Israel. We're going to pray with you, and you can be in your heart already speaking with the Lord. And truly, we will leave this place loving more the salvation in Jesus. Ask the Lord to renew his, your first love when you first met Jesus, when you were used with spiritual gifts, when you spoke in um, tongues, when the Lord was using you in visions. Amen. That's what it is. Ask the Lord to renew. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Tonight is a night of renewal. A, a night of commitment. The Lord is present here. And He wants to honor your wish, your desire, your request. He wants to answer with might so that you may leave His presence tonight rejoicing with the Lord, aware that your name is written in the book of life. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. We're going to raise our hands. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen, Lord. Lord, walk among amongst us. Visit our hearts. Remove the fear. Remove the spiritual coldness. Remove the lack of faith and incredulity. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. You can pray. Lord, we pray to you for the grace that is in the precious blood of Jesus so that once again we present before you, Lord, into your sanctuary, Lord. We want to enter into your presence so that your grace, your love, your mercy, may once again reach us, Lord, so that you may be able, at this instant, bring more faith to our hearts. Fill our lamps, Lord, and our lives with your Holy Spirit and prepare us for the Maranatha because soon we, it will take place in our midst. Lord, bless us. Bless us now. Visit our hearts. Restore our condition, Lord, before you, Lord. Renew, Lord, your people, your church. Baptize tonight with the Holy Spirit. Lord, save lives in this place. Oh, Lord, bless now, Lord, so that our hearts may be burning with your Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Lord, bless your people. We plead to your blessing, renewal, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit will be with the, your people of God now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We are here making ourselves available to whoever may need a prayer. I'd like to remind the brethren to continue to pray for our neighbors. This month, we are interceding for our neighbors so that the Lord may give boldness, authority to invite, to bring them here. It's going to be next week, right? It's going to be a special service. And I will say peace to the Lord to everyone. It's going to be a meeting with the youth with, uh, this evening, soon after the assistance and to all the peace of the Lord.